Well, here we are again, the ATFs after pistol braces. And in this one, what bothers me is they are trying to change the definition of a rifle. Now, the definition was approved by Congress and signed by a president. So in my opinion, they should have no power to change this, but what do I know? Now, they've also implemented a point system that a lot of people have gone over. I've seen quite a few videos on it now. I'm going to go over the point system here, but there's actually a few other things. One in particular that I found in this whole proposed law, proposed rule, that really bothers me. And I'm going to talk about that after I get, after I get through the point system. And of course, as I read more and more through this proposed thing, I'm going to find more stuff if my brain lets me, because I feel my brain cells committing suicide as I read it. But anyway, let's get to it. So basically how this whole worksheet works and the point system, if your gun, your pistol, with a pistol brace reaches four points, you have an SBR. You don't have a pistol, you have an SBR now that's illegal because you don't have paperwork on it. So section one, the prerequisite. Uh, one, the weapon must weigh at least 64 ounces, which is what, four pounds? And two, the weapon must have an overall length of 12 to 26 inches. If it does not meet these two requirements, then you do not proceed to section two. Now this is a weight with an unloaded magazine. And if it's under these two amounts, I think you're fine with a brace on it. If it's over, then you run into issues. But let's move on to section two. All right, here's where the points start taking effect. Okay, accessory design. If it's not based on a known shoulder stock design, I think that's the old first uh, braces for the most part. The ones that fit fully around your arm and all, non-adjustable. You get zero points for that. If it incorporates a shoulder stock design features, you get one point. If it's based on a known shoulder stock design, you get two points. Okay, rear surface area. Device incorporates features that prevent the use of a shoulder device. Zero. Minimizes the rear surface lacking features, discouraging shoulder. One point. Rear surface useful for shouldering the firearm. Two. A material added to the rear surface for shouldering. Okay, what that means is, okay, if you have the split design and it, instead of it just being completely split, you got a little bit of material underneath the split. That's pretty close there might be more to that but now if it's adjustable at all you get two points not adjustable zero stabilizing support uh, the counterbalance design that's the ones that just kind of hooked underneath your uh, forearm non-folding was, was zero and the counterbalance that folded and created a contact surface was one point okay then you have the fin type that's like the cac design uh, if it has an arm strap zero no arm strap, two points. Then we get on to the cuff design that, okay, if it fully wraps around your arm, zero. If it partially wraps around your arm, you get one point. If it fails to wrap around the arm like some of the newer ones, two. And split stock configuration designed to wrap around shooter's arm. Not designed, sorry, I misread that. That's three points. So if it's not designed at all to wrap around your arm, yeah, three points. So at this point, if you have not gotten four points yet, you can move on to the next section. And I think that the points here do not carry over to the next section. I'm pretty sure of that, but I don't know 100%. Never can really know 100% with these assholes. Okay, section three, where almost everything gives you points. Basically, it has to be under 13 and a half inches, or you, it's automatically illegal already. Attachment methods are... Pretty much it's got to be an AR pistol style buffer tube with no adjustment points. Six to six and a half inches. Otherwise everything else starts giving you points. Uh, adjustable buffer tube, one point. Uh, if you make your brace fold at all, you get points. Modifications to it. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, if it slants too much, you get points for it. Don't know how much the slant has to be. It doesn't specify. Well, it says if, if you can't line up with the sights, but who's to determine that? 
Okay, on to stabilizing brace modifications. Uh, cuff type or fin type designed with the strap too short to function gives you two points. If the design of the strap is elastic, because elastic is evil, that gives you two points. Fin type lacking a strap gives you two points. Cuff type with the strap removed. So if you remove the strap off your cuff type at all, well, you're committing a felony. If the brace is modified for shouldering in any way, what does that mean? We don't know, but it's four points. Or if it's a modified shoulder stock, it's four points. Okay, peripheral accessories. This one's the one I like the most. Presence of a hand stop gives you two points automatically. A secondary grip. That gives you four points because now your, your pistol is no longer designed to be shot with one hand. Because, you know, we only shoot pistols with one hand. Never two hands. Okay, rifle type backup sights, flip, si flip up sights, or no sights. So... Basically, if you put sights on the damn thing at all, you're getting points for it. Eye relief. If your eye relief is uh, off, if you positioned whatever sight you have on there too far, you're getting four points. A bipod counts as two. Weighing more than 120 ounces is four. Basically, very easy to get four points here. The sight one still gets me. No sights plus sights. They both give you points. But, let's move on to a few other things. That's the point system for the most part. Let's move on to the other stuff I found. Okay, this one's on manufacturers, but even if a weapon gets less than four points in each section, and attempts by the manufacturer to circumvent federal law, whatever, if they decide that the manufacturer has circumvented federal law, even if it doesn't get the points necessary, they can still decide that it's an SBR, and not a pistol. This one right here. This right here is the loophole they want in this. This right here is why I don't trust the government. I don't trust government entities in general. They try to add these little stipulations in. These little hidden pieces of information. So they can bust you at any time. Okay, it goes on from there to tell you uh, what you need to do if you currently own a firearm in violation of their point system policy. One being remove or alter the stabilizing brace so that it does not reach those points anymore. Next, you remove this, the short barrel and add the 16 inch barrel to it. Uh, destroy the firearm. The ATF will publish information regarding the proper destruction on its website. You can turn the fire in, firearm in to your local ATF office, of course. Or, of course, lastly, you can fill out your Form 1 and pay your $200 extortion tax. Basically, buy your rights back from the government. Of course, none of those options are new. So, the comment period has opened on it. I think there's 89 days left. So, I encourage everyone, of course, to go comment. I also encourage you to write as many words as you possibly can to fill up the entire character balance on that. I think it's, what, 5,000, if I'm not mistaken? Because that's what I've been doing. Basically fill that whole thing up where somebody has to take the time to read every bit of that before they can move on to the next comment. Also, the comment period on the receivers. Definition of receivers. That is still up and going. I uh, don't remember exactly how many days are left, but... If you haven't commented there, comment. I will have links to both of those in the description. And I will see you guys soon with more information and more ATFBS. Thanks for watching.